This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Kai Grunewald tells us how structural cell biology can help us understand virus infection. Hello Kai. Hello. What happens when a virus invades our cells? So when a virus infects a cell, so the cell is um, typically something we don't think of. Uh, if uh, something infects um, a body, we think of a body. Um, in the body we have organs, we have tissues, and the cell is the smallest unit um, that actually the virus is facing. So the virus is faced with a cell that has a boundary and then has a, a defense mechanism. So the virus actually is first faced with this physical barrier, the plasma membrane, and has to overcome this. The virus has developed a number of uh, mechanisms to do this. These are also mechanisms that the virus um, had actually learned from the cell because internally in the cell, they're like cell-cell uh, fusion things or they're like um, little uh, vesicles that fuse all the time as little messengers. So the virus actually hijacks these things and uses this to um, come into the cell. And then the whole program of the life cycle starts. Actually, the virus um, propagates inside the cell to have offspring to infect the neighboring cell. And that's then, if you go back to the whole level of the body, that's how something spreads inside us. And what techniques do you use to study these mechanisms? We use actually a, a range of techniques um, to study this. And I think uh, the, the beauty is of combining these. But our core uh, techniques are actually imaging techniques. And uh, classically, if you think of imaging techniques, that's fluorescent microscopy, uh, what people see as images in imaging. Um, this is typically not sufficient um, because viruses are in the size range of a uh, sub-micrometer and that's where the resolution ends of a fluorescent microscope. So if you have a labeled virus, you can get an idea how it moves inside the cell, but we are using something that is called a cryo-electron tomography. And this actually allows us to get um, nanometer resolution images in 3D uh, of objects that in our case are kept very native so we can actually study it in its um, native environment uh, without destroying that and, and having the resolution to follow a single virus. And can your research help us treat infectious diseases? Yes, it uh, definitely can. It's uh, one of the, having the resolution power, these small things are um, visible, right? So we are now able to, to follow these diseases at the molecular level. So this is inside the cell. We are seeing the communications between the virus and viral components with the cellular components. And it's this kind of tug of war. The virus um, tries to overcome um, the, the cell defense. On the other hand, tries to use cellular mechanisms to um, reprogram the cell to actually help in, uh, in the propagation of itself. So understanding at this level, we can then really understand what is an infection about. It's, it's these little details that, that make it in a global view. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? So in the past five years, we've been able to actually develop the tools and the machineries. So we first uh, established um, these tools that allow us to really look at uh, viruses um, themselves, um, prove this, that this would work. So we uh, actually um, um, we were able to, um, to show the viral ultrastructure to resolution that wasn't possible for these pleomorphic viruses before. Um, then we uh, went a step further to actually look at the virus host interactions uh, and established cellular systems that allow us to do this, and even subcellular systems to look at molecular interactions in more detail. Um, and now we are actually looking at, uh, say, a viral life cycle and focus on specific uh, aspects of this. So, say, viral entry, transport inside the cell, replication of viruses, exit of viruses from the cell. So we are now focusing on these, and this gives us clues, um, first of all, on the viral infection, but back also on cell biology. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? I think we are we're studying a group of viruses that is extremely interesting. So herpes viruses is uh, one of our model um, systems. And herpes viruses span a number of um, viruses that are very relevant um, for, for humans. Um, so you can think of uh, chickenpox, everyone knows chickenpox. We know the uh, herpes simplex virus causing cold sores in the orofacial region. Uh, in severe cases, encephalitis, it can even lead to death. Um, and there are also in the same group uh, tumor viruses uh, that are very important to study. 
So I think uh, working in this group of viruses is uh, very interesting as a pleomorphic group. Um, on the other hand, if we look in the specifics of uh, herpes simplex, one of our model organisms, there are 80 to 95 percent of the human population infected, depending on where you look on the globe. Um, and uh, yeah, even so, only 20 percent uh, develop um, really um, lesions uh, or, or similar symptoms. Um, we still think um, it's, it's very relevant. It's a large um, population. And actually, it's a virus that we can't cure at this point. It's uh, once you acquire it, it will be with you forever. So it's an important group of viruses. And finally, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? We are currently working on the, on the cellular level, understanding the molecular mechanisms on how virus interacts with the cell. Um, this is basic research at this point. Um, but uh, if we, for instance, look at uh, virus entry, if we understand how virus entry um, works at a molecular level, if we know the players from the cell and the interaction with the virus on the other side, if we can interfere with this process, we can keep the virus out of the cell ultimately out of our bodies and this is the way where we will focus. It's not yet there. We are working towards this and I think in a horizon of uh, five years we will have enough understandings that allows us to tackle this. Thank you Kai. Thank you.